Hello everybody and welcome to this video where we are going to be going over metaphor and cliche and cliched metaphor and mixing your metaphors and unmixing your metaphors. Okay, that's a lot of stuff. Okay, but it's really not that long of a video. Look at the timestamp, like right there. You know, we're almost done here. Okay, so this is the second part of Adam's question. And he says, the biggest challenge is usually coming up with metaphors that aren't super generic or haven't been used in some other poem I've written. Now, this is cool that he said it like this, because a lot of people would say, I don't want to use metaphors that have been in poems that I've read. He's worried about using metaphors that he's already written in other poems. And that could be something to be a little concerned with. In my past of reading poetry collections, one of the things that drives me crazy more than anything is when I'm reading a book of great poems, but when you read all the poems together, you realize that they've used the same metaphors in like three or four different poems. And it just like kind of kills the whole flow of the book. You're just like, oh my God, is there really that the only thing you could think about? I understand that. And the best way to figure that out is to, honestly, this is gonna sound dumb, but keep a list of the metaphors you use. Like just have an open notepad on your computer or on your phone or an actual fucking notebook that like you every metaphor you use in a poem, write it down. And then, like, go through it and say, like, have I used this before? Have I used this before? And then have another notebook or another page where you just have a bunch of metaphors that you haven't used yet. Like, if you're just sitting around and you're, like, going, oh, man, my head, it's spinning like a fan. Oh, that's good. I'm going to fucking write that down. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, my, my pants are as hot as a cup of coffee. Oh, gosh. Look, I'm drinking a cup of coffee. I'm going to write that down. You know, and you just do shit like that. Yeah, that coffee is pretty good and warm, yummy. So that's one thing you can do. The other thing about metaphors that aren't generic, if you need to read something that kind of like kicks ass in the metaphor realm that are not generic at all, this is going to sound weird, but Raymond Chandler. If you read Raymond Chandler's Philip Marlowe books, you know, he has some great metaphor in there that are just like, like what the fuck was that like um he was as out of place as a tarantula on an angel food cake you know just like weird little like things like that metaphors i've seen in chandler's work are metaphors i've never seen anyone else use so even if you want to just like ape them like you could you'll do very well like those won't be generic at all. But there is something to be said about super generic sounding metaphor that I know a lot of people who don't like hearing about cliches, and I've talked about this before here too, they don't like hearing like metaphors that they've heard before. You know, like, I don't know, just like little sayings, you know, like at the end of the day for all the marbles. Um, are you serious? Those are the best ones you could come up with right now, you stupid fuck. Her eyes were as blue as the sky. Bleh. It was as hot as a whorehouse in there. Some of you guys are like, I've never heard that one before, dude. Okay, but you know what I'm saying. But a lot of times when you hear things... That, like when you read things that you've heard before there's going to be a familiarity to it and i know that a lot of like more snooty writers and readers do not like that because that seems lazy but there's something to be said about giving your audience something that they understand immediately so then you could give them a metaphor later that kind of fucking hits them hard once they're like ready to take in the metaphors here another thing about this is something that a lot of people will argue me on this one too you can use a cliche and someone reading that that will be the first time they ever heard that you know especially with how writing has been the last like 20 or 30 years where like cliche is like the worst thing anyone could ever fucking do so with that said a lot of these cliches that like people may or may not know have been out of the norm for years so younger readers if you hit them with a cliche they won't even know it's cliche they'll just go oh shit like brightest bulb on the tree this motherfucker that's brilliant you know like 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, so don't be so fucking scared of like having your metaphors sound generic or be generic or ones that have been used before. You know, just th the most important thing is is finishing your work, finishing the poem, finishing the story, and then getting to the next one. And the more you do this, the better you're going to be at doing the metaphors anyway. The better you're going to be at not using cliches all the time. The better you're going to be. Like, the more you do it, the better you get. You know what I'm saying? So, um, if you found this helpful, break them thumbs. New book, out now. Join the Anarchy Crew. Type hard, everybody. And somewhere around here, there's going to be a list of other writing tip videos that you should watch. And I think you should do it. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.